welcome dear participants to the third module of the second week in this module we would discuss kinesics as a part of non verbal aspects of communication we would look at what are the different types of kinesics and what are the context in which their interpretation has to be done etymologically the word kinesics has been derived from a greek word kinesis which denotes movement Professor Ray Bird Wiesel had used it for the first time in 1952 in his book Introduction to Kinesics an annotation system for analysis of body motion and gesture This book had marked the formal research and body motion communication and established it as a field of formal research He had suggested that this term should include body movements and postures and also suggested that non verbal codes had a structure which is similar to those of linguistic codes but wiesel had defined kinesics as a systematic study of how human beings communicate through body movements and gesture and also as the systematic study of the visually sensible aspects of non verbal interpersonal communication This definition covers most of the fields of non-verbal communication. In popular discourse, kinesics is known as body language, the term which is more popular than the official one. As we have commented earlier, body language was initially the title of a book which was published in 1970 by Julius Fast and it gripped the popular imagination immediately. Though the first dictionary entry of the term is found in the 1885 edition of Merriam Webster dictionary however the usage of the term became popular only after the research of professor Ray Bird Wiesel was published several critics prefer to define kinesics not as a field of study but as a specific approach to non-verbal communication as it was established by professor Bird Wiesel various researchers have tried to define the fields associated with kinesics fields which come under its purview in different ways we can refer to duncan as well as harper and others and nap who had enumerated gestures and other body movements facial expressions eye movements and postures as modalities of kinesic behavior they have excluded para language proxemics and tactile communication from this purview refler and engel had included proxemics however most of the researchers agree that the study of kinesics include facial expressions movement of eyes head hand arms feet and legs in other words it studies gestures postures facial expressions and also looks at the human gait to understand its implications and suggestions while we articulate the sounds of a word with the help of our voice and mouth the body also simultaneously starts to convey with its postures gestures and motion an equally important interpretation of the word and it does so in a structured way a way which is analogous to the verbal structure however bird whistle has cautioned us that no position or expression or no physical movement ever carries meaning in itself and of itself it alerts us to our understanding of an isolated kinesic expression as an isolated word which can have multiple interpretations and words in the same way we find that the interpretations of kinesics are dependent on the context in the same way in which the interpretation of a word is dependent on the sentence as well as the context for a complete understanding the movement of the body the kinesic movements should be interpreted only within the context which ideally comes in a pattern and is congruent with the verbal message isolated meanings should not be assigned to words and movements and we must interpret kinesic motion as dependent on the context and also as an accompaniment of verbal messages 
even though as we shall see later on many kinesic expressions can be used independent of verbal stimulus. Kinesics is perhaps the most commanding and influential of the non-verbal codes. It is influential because of the wealth of features which are available for bearing messages. We can look at certain estimates and observations to understand the richness of interpretations which are associated with the field of kinesics. It is said that more than 70 million different physical signs can be produced by humans. When Professor Ray Bird Whistle and Albert Mehrabia had started the codified studies of nonverbal aspects of communication, they had tried to prepare video footage of different physical expressions, of facial expressions, of eye contacts, of kinesic behavior, etc. But they had to stop it because human face and human body is capable of literally in numerous number of expressions. Beyond the basic identification of certain basic emotions and certain universal gestures, nonverbal aspects of communication cannot ascertain more. Physiologists have estimated that there are 30 or so muscles in the face which are capable of displaying almost as many as 20,000 different expressions. Hughes has reported in his research that 1000 steady human postures are possible and I am sure that the number would rise. Bird Whistle has claimed that up to 250,000 expressions are possible. Kaut has observed almost 8000 distinct gestures in classroom behavior and 5000 hand gestures in critical situations. These estimates highlight the nearly limitless kinesic means for sending nonverbal signals. If the capacity of human beings to send innumerable kinesic signals exist, then our capacity to recognize kinesic signals is also potentially immense. Vision accounts for around 80 percent of our sensory perception. The remaining 20 percent comes from our combined senses of hearing, touching, tasting and smelling etc. It is said that a trained pilot can purportedly identify a plane flashes as briefly as 1 by 200 of a second. Fleeting facial expressions and body movements which we put into micro expressions which cannot even be very properly recorded by a casual onlooker can be still understood by several human beings. Our body presents useful information even when it is isolated and even in solitude it can reveal internal mental states or emotions to any person. Consequently, we find that people rely more on kinesic cues than any other code to understand meanings of nonverbal messages. We understand that kinesics can send unlimited number of verbal signals particularly when we consider that all of us can display more than a single behavior in any given instance. For example, if we have to appreciate a friend for something he or she has just done, what exactly do we do with the help of our bodily gestures? Either we can give a nod, we can give half a smile, we can combine the nod and the smile, we might choose to be more enthusiastic and pass on any type of uh, hand signals also. Now, what exactly do we pass on is immediately understood by our friends. Even though what is common in all these isolated and different signals is a sense of appreciation, the level of appreciation and at the same time different variations are also immediately understood by the receiver. So, human beings have an immense capacity to send as well as to receive kinesic signals immediately. The signals which are sent in 125 microseconds, the fleeting facial expressions and body movements can also be registered by our brain. But how do we acquire this capability to transmit and understand kinesic messages? 
Many aspects of our kinesic behavior and understanding are learned through environmental and social experiences. It is pertinent here to quote a research by Judy Bergian and others entitled The Visual and Auditory Codes, Kinesics and Vocalics, which was published in 2016. They have suggested that the kinesic expressions are acquired in three ways simultaneously. Firstly, they are acquired from innate neurological processes which are passed on genetically and which have developed through evolution. They are also derived secondly from experiences which are common to all human beings in our interaction with the environment and thirdly through culture specific tasks and social interactions that do vary across cultures, co-cultures and individuals. And therefore, we find that there are certain aspects of kinesic behavior which are universally understood, but at the same time there are many in which certain variations are introduced because of cultural and social differences. Let us look at the types of kinesics. Professor Ray Bird Whistle had suggested that there are three types of kinesics and he has listed emblems, illustrators and effect displays in his research work. However, Professor Paul Ekman and his colleague Uwellis Friesen have built on Professor Bird Whistle's work and they have classified kinesics into five types or five categories and they are emblems, illustrators, affective displays, regulators and adapters. In my initial introduction to body language, I had referred to three aspects or three types of kinesics because these are the original three types. Now for further elaboration, I have included the findings of Professor Paul Ekman and Wallace Friesen for a more comprehensive explanation. Kinesics conveys specific meanings that are open to cultural interpretation. Our movements etc. can be misinterpreted when we have to communicate across cultures and most of them are carried out with little awareness and therefore, we find that our kinesic expressions present the truth about our emotions and feelings. Let us look at the first category or the type of kinesic behavior that is emblems. Emblems are speech independent gestures. They have also been termed as autonomous gestures by Rowan Levin. They are the movements of hands, feet, arms and other parts of the body which have a specific and codified meaning and they are not as dependent on a speech as other kinesic behaviors are. So, emblems are non-verbal signals with a verbal equivalent. They are easily identified because they are frequently used in specific context and therefore, the person who receives these emblems immediately understand the meaning. Human civilization has invented emblems. It is not a knowledge with which we are born, rather we have absorbed them through our culture by interacting with others. And unlike other aspects of kinesic behavior, we use emblems with a conscious and complete awareness of the meaning of these signals. Emblems have codified meaning and they have very specific meaning which is also translatable into literal words. The meaning may be constructed in two ways. Firstly, it may be a codified meaning which has got well written and well documented meaning. For example, the codes of underwater swimmers or the signals which are made by a traffic signal policeman. Then languages of the deaf and the dumb, we find that there exist codified languages. They may be different, but they do have a codified interpretation. Even though we find that the expressions of the deaf and dumb can also be understood by other people who do not understand the specific languages for the differently abled people. The second way in which meaning of an emblem is constructed is through culturally learnt 
meanings and behavioral associations. This may not exactly be codified in any legal term of the world, but within a culture or across certain cultures, it has almost a fixed meaning which is understood by all. Many emblems are produced by hands, they may also be produced by face for example, dropping the jaw and holding the mouth which is used to indicate surprise or shrugging the shoulders to indicate helplessness or your unwillingness to talk. They can also be static or they can be made while in motion. There are certain examples of emblems. These emblems which I have given in this slide are culturally coded. The V shaped sign which is popularized by Winston Churchill in the European culture is known for a victory sign. In this sign we find that palm of the hand faces forward with the middle and four fingers held erect. In comparison to this victory sign which has been popularized by Winston Churchill, there is an inverted V sign also which may either convey two in number or it can also be constituted as a gesture of insult. Similarly, the fist sign which has been often used across cultures is an expression of solidarity or defiance. It was popularized in different revolutions in the beginning of the 20th century, be it the Chinese revolution or the Russian revolution. In 1990, Nelson Mandela walked free of prison holding this position. It also came to be known as the black power salute during the days of racial rights in the USA. As the meaning of emblem can also be culturally constructed, we find that there are certain variations in the way they can be interpreted. Let us look at some of these symbols. Let us look at the symbol which may have different interpretations. It can be a symbol which denotes that everything is alright. It may also suggest that it is zero. It may also suggest money in certain cultures and it can even be considered to be an obscene gestures in certain societies. We have looked at the V symbol already, the two different aspects of this symbol. The thumbs up is also related with a sense of approval. It can be a simple innocuous way of hailing a taxi and it can still be considered as an obscene gesture in the Middle East. The last sign which is displayed over here also may have different interpretations. But even though these interpretations are different, we find that a broad understanding of their meaning does exist in every culture. Next aspect of kinesics is illustrators. Illustrators are known as meta communicative because they are messages about messages. So, they are the hand and arm movements that accompany speech or function to accent or complement what is being said. For example, I may pound my fist on the podium during my speech to highlight a point or to negate a point or I may nod my head and say yes, yes, yes in order to forcibly pass on this idea of my consent or I can say no, 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 no to highlight this idea that I actually want a negative interpretation here. So, this head and hand signal associated together suggest a complementary aspect of my words. So, nonverbal messages tell us how to interpret verbal messages and they may vary considerably across cultures. So, emblems as well as illustrators are learnt informally through socialization. Accept the codified aspects of emblem, for example, the underwater swimmer's coat or uh, the hitchhiker's interpretation of various symbols etcetera. We find that the rest of the emblems and illustrators are learnt through socialization only. Emblems primarily imply hand gestures that have a direct verbal translation and can be used to either repeat or substitute the verbal communication. In comparison to that, illustrators imply 
those hand, arm or head signals that function to accent or complement speech. They cannot be used without a speech and this is the major difference between emblem and illustrator. So, illustrators create visual images and support spoken messages. They are subconscious movements which occur more regularly than emblematic kinesic movements. For example, holding our hands apart to indicate the big size of something. In comparison to emblems which are always used in a conscious manner, we find that illustrators are unconscious and that is why we find that the use of illustrators also tells us whether a person is an extrovert or an introvert. An extrovert person uses more illustrators and then an introvert person uses less illustrators. The cultural differences are also there, but these differences in the personalities are also understood on the basis of the use of illustrators. Illustrators include behaviors to point out, outline a form or depict emotion. So, they are like a visual aid. There are certain cultural variations also in the use of illustrators. There are certain cultures for example, in most of the Latin American countries, we find that people use more illustrators in comparison to their Anglo-Saxon counterparts. The absence of illustrators indicates a certain lack of interest in Latin American countries. In contrast, we find that in some Asian cultures, an extensive use of illustrators is often interpreted as a lack of intelligence. The third category of kinesics is affective displays. So, they are the movements usually facial gestures which display a specific emotion. They can display sometimes real emotions also, but they are often faked emotional states which are like using a polite social lies. Sometimes all of us have to use polite social lies in our professional settings. For example, we may come across a very old colleague in an official meeting. We did not have very cordial terms with, the, with this particular colleague, but we have to tell him, oh, I am so happy to see you now. But how do we pass it on? Do we say, oh, how happy I am to see you here today? Or do we say it, how happy I am to see you here today? So, here in order to come across as more convincing and as a more enthusiastic person to convey our sense of happiness to the other person, we have to use affective displays. So, these are like polite social lies. So, we fake a particular emotional state with the help of our facial features. Now, a word of caution can be given over here. Unless and until we are very accomplished actors, we cannot continue this expression for more than 2 minutes perhaps and the other person can easily find out the truth behind us. And therefore, affective displays help us to avoid friction in a particular situation and this is their significant role. So, they are the movements of the body that tell us about the emotional state a person is experiencing but more often faking and they are primarily facial configurations which display affective states. So, facial emblem is a kinesic behavior that usually has a very specific meaning. For example, a genuine smile may suggest happiness. So, a facial emblem like non-facial emblem is a speech independent gestures, but affective displays are used like illustrators always in association with words. A lack of effective display does not indicate a lack of emotions however. Cultural considerations also help us to understand what is considered to be an acceptable social behavior. For example, a person from Japan who is expressing anger shows significantly fewer effective display movements than his Italian counterpart. The word effect means emotion and therefore artists particularly cartoonists and illustrators 
can draw certain lines and with the help of a few strokes of brush or pencil can draw human emotions very appropriately on a piece of paper. The fourth category of kinesics is known as regulators. Now, regulators are non-verbal acts which maintain and regulate the back and forth nature of speaking and listening between two or more interactants. Rowe and Levin have suggested that regulators are kinesic behaviors that shape or influence turn taking in speech and listening. So, these are the body movements which control, adjust and sustain the flow of a conversation and are frequently relied on to assess the feedback. For example, how much of our message has been understood by the listener. So, we may nod our head in order to pass on our feedback. We can uh, move our eyes in different directions to suggest whether we have understood it or not. And these regulators control the back and forth flow of speaking and listening in an effective manner. Whereas the study of illustrators and effective displays focuses on the speaker's behavior, the studies of regulators focus on the facial expressions etc. in the listener. By looking at the kinesic aspects of the listener's personality, we can make out the level of feedback, the level of understanding the level of response etc. in a speaker. Whereas, by looking at illustrators and effective displays, we can judge the same things in a speaker. We have been looking at the cultural differences which govern our interpretation of different aspects of kinesics. In the use of regulators also, we find that the impact of cultural conditioning is there. A misinterpreted regulatory signal in cross-cultural situations, in international politics or in international business can lead to serious problems. Researchers tell us that in professional settings, it helps us to understand the associations as well as leadership roles. O'Connor has found that frequent gesturing is highly correlated with people who were perceived by others to be leaders in small groups. And those who were leaders tended to use more shoulder and arm gestures. He has also found that in a group setting, people may adapt poses which are similar to those in the group that they agree with. And counselors often help clients self-disclose by adopting similar postures to those of their clients to establish an open communication. The next category of kinesics is adapters. Adapters include changes in posture and other movements which are made with little awareness. These body adjustments perform either a specific function or they tend to make a person more comfortable in a particular position. They occur with very little awareness. Most of the time they are made without any consciousness and therefore they are considered to be the keys to understanding true emotions of others. Adapters principally comprise body focused movements, shifting body or feet position when seated, rubbing, touching, scratching, picking oneself, scratching, tapping of a pencil on the table can be considered as examples of adapters. Adapters are non-verbal acts that are not intended to communicate. Yet when we view such acts, we may make certain judgments about the person who is displaying them. And therefore, the interpretation of an adapter either may be overstated or it may also be conversely oversimplified. Many movements or adapters that function to satisfy personal needs may be misinterpreted. Movements such as shifting position when seated may be simply a way of resolving a specific physical situation. For example, I may be uncomfortable and I am shifting my position, but the other person may understand it as a reflection of an attitude or a certain emotion. Adapters are thought to develop in childhood as physio-psychological means of coping. Some of these movements increase with increased anxiety, for example, tapping the disc with a pencil. 
Others are thought to be partial survival of other behaviors which are believed to have been a part of our evolutionary past. For example, Paul Ekman has suggested that restless movements of hands and feet are perhaps a throwback to our flight reactions. This list of adapters help us to understand the frequency with which human beings can use them to unconsciously display their ideas and emotions to other people. So, today we have discussed different types of kinesic behaviors. In our further discussions, we would continue with these discussions. Thank you.